Hey everybody, it's Kate Richberg and we're on for real right now. If it's Friday, it must be free tip Friday. And I am ready to share this really cool project with you. I've been working on it like crazy this morning because as you know, who wants to be too prepared for free tip Friday, right? Plus, um, we've got our brand new bib components in and I really wanted to show you some cool tips with them. So I've just started working with them and I'm really excited to share with you um, what I've got going on here. Um, I've got Gracie behind the camera and Brandwin snapping some photos and everyone's packing up your orders. So how are we doing, Gracie? Gita says happy Friday, everyone. Oh, happy Friday, Gita. Says, hey, everyone. Melanie says good morning. Good morning, good morning. Um, Art says hi, Kate. What's that? Art says hi, Kate. Oh, hi, Art. How are you? And Sylvie, Sylvia Hall. Oh, great. Everybody's here. That's great. I hope everybody's Friday is going well. I'm picking up all the random detritus I have on this table. I want to show you guys a couple of my missteps that I did while I'm working this morning. Uh, Drea said that Janice had a chuckle at two prepared. <laughs> That's right. You know... Janice is always so prepared, and you know, for Free Tip Friday, I like doing a little bit of flying by the seat of my pants. Um, I think it's kind of fun, fun and exciting. Um, okay, well, shall we jump right in? We've got so much to share. Hey, Brandon, I think that's my paper towel down there that I need that's kind of damp. That's what I'm looking for. Perfect. So let's move that stuff around. I'm going to put it right here today. See if that... All right. How are we looking? Do I need to? How do you like that? I think that's okay. As long as I'm not too... Maybe you can angle it slightly this way. Some angle? The other way. Other way? Mm -hmm. Like this way. This way? This way? Yeah, so that we can see how you're... Do I like that? I don't know. You know what? I'm going to face it this way. Okay. Is that okay? Because so then I'll have a bigger... Down. Are we working upside down? Yeah, we're going to see how you do it. Oh. Well, alright. Then maybe I will do it this way. Your mom says hi. Candace hi, Mama. Good morning to both of us. Good morning, everybody. We're just getting our little, all of our ducks in a row. Maybe I'll angle myself then, too, a little bit. We've got two people joining from Smoky Mich uh, Mission there we go. Canada. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Canada, there's a lot of smoke going on up there because of all those fires mm. in Montana going on right now, right? Well, welcome, everybody. It's great to see you all. How's this? Can everybody see okay? Do we like that? Nice and tight. Better, better. So let me show you. We've got these new components in, you guys, and you may have seen them. We did a great giveaway uh, with them a few weeks back. And these are our, what we call kind of our boho components or boho bibs. And these bibs um, come in these really great colorways. I've got the brass color here, and then the antique silver and the antique copper. Oh, my dad, my dad, modern Woman. The Modern Woman, yes. yes this um, style is called Modern Woman. And then this style right here, Gracie, this one's called boho, mm -hmm. right? So this one's a little bit smaller. And I'm going to show you guys a tip at the end about how I'd use this. But the tips that I share with you today, we've got three different ones. And Brandwin, you want to flash, hand me that earring. I wasn't going to show it, but just the finished one, it's this one right here. We've got a free tip, or um, Facebook Live coming up, you guys, that's going to show you how to do this earring. So I just want to flash it. I've got a drop and stuff there that I'm going to play with with that. But that component's called Flower Child. This one's called Flower Child, yeah. And so we've got some earrings that I'm going to be playing around with there. Um, but all of the techniques that I'm showing you today can be used um, kind of interchangeably with all of these different um, components. Okay. So let me... Um, um. Someone said they opened the email this morning and they loved seeing the TRS. Oh, Trish, she got oh, her blog Oh, Trish, email. did you? Yeah, I should have. I should have put my TR on this <laughs> morning. Maybe I'll put it on at the end. But we were thinking how fun these might be if you reverse them on the tiaras and put these, wrap these on the tiara as kind of a, a centerpiece for that. But if you guys haven't opened your newsletters, um, please do. We've got a great weekend offer, and we also have um, the beginning of our tiara challenge mm -hmm. on there, the, the shout-out. So you'll see everybody's 
um, pieces. There's a link to a great blog post that Drea wrote all about it, and we want to see what you're going to make with your tiaras as well. So it's going to be, it's a really super fun project. So, but let's take a look at what I've got here with this modern woman, um, to this, this bib. I'm going to slide this into the four so you guys can kind of see what's going on. And I'll turn it a little bit so you can see it here. These, to me, just cried out for, like, as Janice would say, encrusting or, you know, some wire work. Um, and I've used our new melon beads for these. And these guys are Czech Melon, and you can go right onto beadshop.com and find these guys. Or if you have kind of a fun um, round bead in your stash, you could use that too. The reason why I chose these melon beads, number one, I love them. Number two, they have kind of a vintage texture to them. Can you see on that melon bead? These are pressed glass. So they have like a little ridge, like a little melon right here. And then there's been um, kind of a finish put over them with this blue. So they kind of add some depth to the bead itself. So I think it's a really great match um, for, um, for this bib. And we have them in a lot of different colors. So you choose the colors that you like. Um, but I really like this, this guy in particular. And you know what, we'll have to look it up and see which colorway this is, because I'll be honest, I couldn't tell you, but it's on, um, it's there with, uh, with the melon beads. Um, then, Brandon, do you know what colorway this, this guy is? That, I believe, is the ivory turquoise. Oh, ivory turquoise. There you go. Two of my favorite colors. And then, you can see, I'm going to hold this up. I thought that this also screamed for, I don't know, for fiber, right? And so I went to our tassels, and I got the plum tassels. And our tassels come in a little package of six, so I'm using five for this piece. So that gives you one to screw up on. And I'm going to actually show you <laughs> some of my screw-ups from this morning, because it's always good to have an extra one, because sometimes these guys can be a little tough to work with. So I used tassels, and then I also used our... Um, our bugle beads, our three millimeter bugle beads, and you can see those guys right there. And these, uh, this is um, bugle two zero zero eight, um, and it kind of has that Irish uh, iris finish on it. And I thought it really brought out the blue in this turquoise ivory um, Picasso. And then, of course, last but not least, I needed a bead that would act as a good little spacer and would also act as kind of a good accent bead. So you know, you guys, what I chose. What did I choose? Everyone say it with me. My favorite bead, and it's the Brass Little Shadow. So the way I started kind of tackling how I would do this piece is I started with the tassels because the tassels are kind of the main um, the focal point or kind of the main thing that's going to kind of take focus in this project. So I wanted kind of a good statement color, so I chose the plum. And then as I was looking on the wall here at beadshop.com, these purple, this purple mix from our vintage finds really caught my eye. Now it's not the exact same color as this plum, but I think that it adds kind of a good pop, and it's also kind of in the same color saturation family, right? So I thought it worked out pretty well. So I pulled these aside. Then that's when I went to the wall and said, well, I need something to lighten this up. So I jumped in with um, this melon bead that's a little bit lighter. So let's take a look at how I did the fringe on this piece, and then we'll talk about stringing. What I did was with these, I used the 1.5 millimeter um, head pin. You can see that here. And this is just the brass head pin, 1.5, I'm sorry, one and a half inch, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. One and a half inch head pin, that's a 24 gauge. And so that 24 gauge, I needed something that was thin enough that was going to go through this bugle. Because if I forced a heavier gauge, and you can kind of see down the head of that pin, these bugle beads, remember you guys, are glass, 
So if I used a wire gauge that was just too fat, like this is our regular head pin or eye pin, and you can see I can't even get it in there. This is like a 22 gauge. So I had to drop down a significant size to really get this through there. So then I used, and you can see this little silhouette here, I used my bugle, I used my shadow, and I used my melon. And so that's ready to go. This would also make a great little simple earring mm -hmm. too, right? It's kind of fun. on for the first time. Everyone's welcoming her. Hi, Anne. Welcome. It's nice to have you. So I'm just going to do a quick wire wrap. And so you guys can find a lot of these um, skill builders. And I'll link it. I'll uh, throw a little blog post up after this broadcast. And you guys can um, know where our skill builder is for wire wrapping. But if you go under projects and you go under skill builders and you uh, scroll around in our skill builders, you'll see um, how to make a wire wrap loop. And that's all I'm doing here. I'm using my round nose pliers, pulling it up and around, bringing this wire underneath. Yes. Oh no, I, Drea said, use my melon in quotes. Kate, you're always using your melon. You've got a creative one. That was pretty funny. Oh, it's true. Well, I am, I, it's true. I can, lucky I get to create for a living. It's good times. Though sometimes you wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought I was that creative this morning, Drea, you would have been laughing because I was flailing around a little bit, so. But better to flail. I can flail a little bit on camera, but I try not to flail too much. I'll come in and I'll get my wire cutter. And you really want to be careful, you guys. This is a glass bugle bead, like I mentioned before. And if I bend, you saw when I bent the wire here, let me show you, let me backtrack this a little bit. You saw when I bent the wire, if I bent the wire like too close, see how I left that little neck, and that's one of the reasons why I wire wrapped this closed, because I wanted the loop to be really secure, yeah. but if I had just made a regular loop over the top and kind of bent it up against this wire, I would run the risk of chipping this bugle so I just want to be really careful um, about not chipping this bead. So when I came up and around and did my wire wrapping, let me show you that one more time. I've got one prepared here. I won't shove the head of my tool too close to that bead. I'll come up and over. I'll pull that loop down and underneath. And as I do the wire wrapping with this guy, I come in and I'm wire wrapping from the bottom of the loop whoops, to the top of that bugle. I stop a little early and maybe a little earlier than I might if I'm doing a regular wire wrap. So can you see there's just the tiniest little space there and that little space is going to help me not crack this bugle. Then I'm going to come in really carefully, as close as I can without nicking the wire or the bead. Clip it away, put my finger on that wire so that wire doesn't fly up and hit me in the head. And now very carefully I'm going to use my bent chain nose to scoot that around. Oh, and see? See that? I broke it. Too. I broke it! But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. But sometimes you do nick them and it just nicked right there. It's the first one I've nicked all morning. Of course, I do it right on camera, but that's okay. All I would do is I'd come in, bugle beads are cheap. I'd come in, I'd toss that bugle bead away, and I'd get myself a fresh, um, a fresh head, head pin. It happens, nothing to cry about. You just get a fresh bugle from over here, and you're ready to go. But now I'm gonna try and come in Try and clip this again without hurting anything. There we go. And really just get that little tip as carefully as I can. There we go. And I'm ready. So that bugle or that component is ready to wrap there and there. Let me show you how I did these guys. This would also make a fantastic earring, I think. 
These again are with our little tassels. Now the way our tassels come, you guys, they come in a package that looks like this, right? A little plastic package to keep them all together. Then when you take them out, they kind of have a will of their own. So what I do is I get my little damp um, paper towel, I've dampened it here, and I tame them a little bit by just, usually my paper towel is a little wetter, but see how I can just kind of wipe that little damp towel down the tassels and it kind of makes everything fall into place. And you can do that, like if you're wearing your necklace and you put your necklace away and your tassels get all bent and kind of out of shape, you can do the same thing to your finished jewelry. Just fix them up like that. So now this is the trick, you guys. So let me show you. I have tried, this morning I was a little bit, I don't know, a little crazy, and I just couldn't get the tassels to do what I wanted them to do. So let me show you what I want, want them to do, and then let me show you some of my missteps. You want to be real careful when you pull these guys off of the thread because they're fragile until they get to their final destination. So see how, whoops, I pulled it off, I pulled it off too much, so it fell off right there. But you can see, can you see there, I've got a little hole in that tassel. I'm going to aim my eye pin, in this case, through that hole, and I'm going to walk this tassel right onto my wire. And be really careful, see if you catch it at the end, you've got to just tell it where to go. Okay. And what I did was, if I didn't like the way that this end looked, I'm going to kind of smoosh it all together so I think I'll be okay but I could also come back in and I did that on one of these. I'm going to glue this tassel closed anyway so I'm just going to trim that little bit off and slide it back up. Okay. Now what I'm going to do without any further ado I'm going to glue this sucker closed. The way I do that is I get my hypo cement my little plastic baggie and you guys have seen me do this before we did this on our malas and we've we always glue our tassels to make sure that everything is coming together just a little dot of glue there a little dot of glue there and that's going to dry I'm going to wipe off the tip of my hypo cement and put that lid right back on there we go so I'm going to set this aside to dry, and I've got this one made up already. So you can see I've got this on my eye pin, and what I did was I cut my eye pin away. So I cut the eye of the pin off. And I used eye pins for this for a couple of reasons. I know you're thinking, well, Kate, why didn't you just use wire? Awesome. Right. Why? That's right, Gracie. Why, did Kate, why didn't you just use wire? Well, the eye pin... The way that these have been made, they've been tempered, so they're pretty stiff. So, um, so that's why I like to use these. Wire might be a little, might not have the quite the stiffness that I want. Might not be as hard as I want it to be. Plus, I can't really hammer these or anything, so I need to have kind of a nice stiff mm -hmm. wire. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> when I make these, I thought you used the eye pin because you were going to feed the tassel through the hole. So. I was tried that. that. Your, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. It was. I tried it. And so what Gracie is saying, I'll slide this off. And I'll slide this on and I'll show you what I mean. One of my one of my mishaps. Sliding, sliding, sliding. Whoops, while well, I slid it off. Now I'll slide this on. What I like to do is get it kind of halfway off, shove this eye pin in, and then pull that it out the rest of the way, but sometimes the best of intentions. There you go. That looks pretty good. But see, if I opened up this eye pin, the eye on this pin is just too small. Hmm. I so see. I open it up, I'm sliding this down, and I'm kind of like, oh, wah, wah. Hmm. So Maybe that's why. Let me get why, a close-up of that. Yeah. Let me get the wah, wah. The wah, -wah. wah, -wah. <laughs> Sad. So I just. Cut it. Yeah, I cut it. Cut it off like that. 
And now I'm ready for my next step on this. This one needs to be tamed a little bit more. It also needs to be glued. What I did, some of my missteps I'll show you. You can see this one, and this worked okay. I shoved a big jump ring in here, and this worked, but it really only worked kind of on one, and I was still having some trouble with this. So I didn't love how this looked. I felt like this connection was a little awkward. And you can see when I connected them, I wanted, I didn't want to see only jump ring, right? So the jump rings I had to use were so big that all I really saw were jump rings. So I thought, well, I'm going to slide these on, I'll wire wrap it, then I can add a few more of these beads and just make a little rosary loop right there. And that's how I connected it. So I wouldn't see, though that's open a little bit. So I'm going to get my chain nose. There we go. So I wouldn't see a whole bunch of um, jump rings hanging here, right? So let me show you how I wire wrap that, and then I'll show you how I connected it. So all I did was I slid this tassel over to the side, and I have a long end and a short end. This is, I don't know, about a half an inch maybe. And I'll push this long end up, kind of like you're doing a briolette wrap right? Kind of get it into place so it's ready to wrap. Question? Yep. Rochelle is asking, she wonders whether aluminum jump rings might work with a tassel. Oh, sure. I don't see why not. I don't know. I've never really used aluminum jump rings, but you try it out. Can't hurt, right? As long as they wrap, as long as they're nice and sturdy, I don't think you'll have a problem. Then the short end, I can use my pliers or my fingers. Just going to bring that short end kind of around so everything's kind of crossed up and over the tassel. Is that how you wire up a briolette? Yeah, it's just the same. See how I hold everything nice and tight under the head of my tool with that little short end? I'm just going to wrap it around. We have a skill builder on. We do mm -hmm. for wire wrapping. No, on briolette. Or on the briolette wrap. Specific mm -hmm. style this specific of, yeah. style. And then can you see how I just brought it around once? Because again, I didn't want a ton of um, I didn't want a ton of wire there. I didn't want to make this too long. So I just made a single wrap. Now I'm gonna clip this away. Poke that little end in with my bent chain nose. And now I what did I do? I added a bead and a shadow at the very top. Now I want to make sure that everything is facing in the right direction. So when I make my loop, I'm going to make my loop so that it loops up and mm. over so it's not in the same, so the loop isn't facing me, but the side of the loop is facing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I bent, this is pretty um, heavy gauge wire, so I don't need to worry about this loop opening. But I do want to make sure that this loop is large enough so that it um, has some movement. See, I just pulled it up and over. Hmm. Again, more about rosary loops. We just call this a rosary loop. More about rosary loops in our skill builders on beadshop.com. Make sure that everything is facing the correct way. Now, you guys, I make sure that that's completely closed. Now I open it like hmm. a little kickstand, pull that up. And then on these, you can see I've put my little guy here, so I'm going to skip a loop so that I have room, so it doesn't run into the other one too closely. Slide it on and close it nice and tight with my chain nose plier. Can so you, you can see. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to add my last three. I did three dangles towards the end. I'm going to add those guys, and I used jump rings this time, but I used smaller ones. I think these are the 4 millimeter, um, 4 millimeter 18 gauge, so that they are sturdy enough to hold, big enough so that there's movement, but not so big that all you see is loop. So see, I've slid on my drop put my jump ring on and I have my jump ring nice and big so I can get it on there and just use two pliers to close it off and I'll do the 
next to this guy. Slide it on. And thank you, Gita, for linking our skill builders. Oh, as always, Gita, what would we do without you? Thank you. Any other questions, Gracie, that people no, are having? I don't, don't have any questions. Oh. But Art was saying something a long time ago. Let me see if I can find his comment. I think it was he was saying hi to somebody. Ah. Yeah. Let me clip this extra off. But Drea posed a challenge to um, oh. three of our really, like, Viewers who are always on. Okay. Gita, Melanie, and I think, let's see, here's, I think it was Kim. She uh -huh. said, PR is from you ladies. Oh, definitely. She's like, come on, people. Yeah, we <gasps> need, we've put out that challenge. We want to see what you guys are going to make with our tiaras. We're super, with our tiara frames. <laughs> We're really, it was super really fun, excited. So Wasn't it it's fun? Very exciting to see yeah. what. To see what everybody else is going to make. So can you see you guys here, how I've just added, but you know, you do you, whatever works. You gotta put it down a little but, more. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll lay, okay. I'll lay it down right there. Perfect. But I think it really looks nice as kind of an encrusted collar. Tammy's saying, so you're not hanging something from each loop. I'm not, though Tammy, I could, but I thought, you know, these little melons, and I did try it out, I checked, like, if I put this one right next to it, you can see these melons kind of hit. And so I wanted a little bit of space. Now, I could, if I wanted to, see how there's a little bit of room right here, you know, kind of above where this melon bead right here. I could add a tiny little drop of something in between all of these. Sure. So it doesn't displace everything down here. That might look nice. Okay. Sorry, sorry yes. to interrupt. It was, um, yes, yes. Tammy was saying that Art had said uh, that since she has all these items, she won't make need to make another order this weekend. She said he is wrong. He That's is hilarious. wrong. Oh. And well. um, Mel is asking if uh, she can make it with a comb instead. I don't see why not. What do you think about that? Mm, sounds interesting. Yeah. I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. So now, if we're going to string this up, there's a couple of ways that we could close this off. So I'm going to put a, um, I'll put a crimp tube on here and then I'll show you guys what I'm doing. So I've got some soft flex, and I could put this on cord and I'll show you how I'll do that in a second, but I've got some soft flex here. And I wanted to bring up the shadows up into the design of my piece okay now I could have used around this a crimp cover to hide my soft mm -hmm. flex but I wanted it to be and I'm actually gonna make this loop a little smaller I wanted to pull those shadows up into the design of my piece so what I did was I strung so if they had left to go meet up with friends for coffee, but now she's logged on from the coffee shop. Uh huh. And she's like, "I'm so dedicated." She's oh, waiting for her friends watching. Oh, I us. love it. <laughs> have a so have fun. a macchiato for me. <laughs> so see how I've made some room, covered that loop with the shadows, like that. So I've got some movement here, and now I'm just going to crimp this closed. Again, we've got a bunch of skill builders on how to crimp. I'm not going to go over step by step crimping. Um, due to our due to a little bit of a time constraint, but um, we've got a lot of great skill builders about that. Let me get a little closer to my face so sure. I can, sorry, so I can see how I'm crimping this. It's um, kind of hard for me to see. Karen's there we asking go. Asking if you could use jump rings if you try chain instead. You bet. I could do this with chain, and what I could do is um, attach with jump rings, or I could wire wrap, make like a wire wrap bead unit. Okay. And do that too. So see, there's my crimp. I think it's it nestled right there. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. I'm reading comments. I'm not looking no, at No, no worries. Hold on. I'm gonna put a crimp cover on this. Okay. So I think her name is Angela from a few weeks ago, if yes. I remember correctly. Hi, Angela. Or maybe it's not. It's just that some abbreviated name that I'm trying to remember if it was Angela. Okay. She, he or she says, 
This reminds me of the Sultanate of Amman jewelry. They use coins instead of tassels. Yes. I love that look. And you know what I did? We could use each in coins. We could mm -hmm. use each in coins. You know what I did? And I'm going to fix this because I don't what like happened? it. I put the crimp tube on, the crimp tube cover on backwards. You can see the seam on the front. No good, you guys. No good. So let me just kind of cut this away. I'm going to kind of hack at it to get it off there. Because if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right, right? Let's see if I can just get that off. So that's something. There we go. Something you really want to be aware of. So if this is my loop and I've got my crimp cover. I want to make sure that the seam of my crimp cover, see that, is in back, mm -hmm. not in front. If anything, if it's worth doing, you guys, it's worth doing right, right? Right. Right. So don't be afraid to just take it off, fit a new one, and then check it. Doesn't that look much better? Mm -hmm. There we go. So now, uh, I just got this purple mix because I loved how it looked. So I know that I'm going to use half for one side and half for the other, so I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to cut it about right there. And I'll put that side aside. And I'll just uh, string it up. Now, I'm going to make this fairly short-ish because, again, it's a bib. So... I don't want it to be too long. So this is something where, and you know what? I'm going to graduate up to that. Yeah, so I have a couple of melons questions. left. Yeah, sure. Um, one was, Good time for them. Um, well, a lot of kudos for you catching the seam. They say oh. they don't no notice these things until later. And yeah, then you've got to, I know, you got to check it. Um, and Keith is asking if it's 8 millimeter. Sharon wants to know what the color code on your crimper is. And someone else wants to know if we can see you do the crimp again. Yeah, of course. I'll do the crimp. I'll um, string this quickly so you guys can see the crimp on the other side. So the color code, let me pull this down so people can see it, right? This was a Janus invention because Janus is a genius. And uh, when we were doing our Softflex um, free tip, not free tip Friday, but uh, Facebook Live a while back, and we were it was under Softflex 101, um, Janice, what she did was she came up with this little scheme because this is a three-in-one crimper and each little color, color or each little divot, each little oh. space in the crimper is for a different crimp tube, a different size crimp tube. And Janice was kind of having trouble telling them apart. So what she did is she went into where we have our kind of colored nail polish. We did that a while back also using colored nail polish on some of our charms. And she just put little dots along the way on the crimping plier. So when it's closed, you can see, oh, the three millimeter is the teal, mm -hmm. the two millimeter is the pink, and the one millimeter is the yellow. And then this bright yellow, that's the folder. So it gives you some place to look. And if you look in Softflex 101, I posted it. great. <laughs> the episode notes for that, you'll see that explanation a little bit more. Um, what was the other the other question, Gracie? I think uh, these are eight millimeter. Um, and the other Stones, one was, yes, eight millimeter stones, yes. Um, about showing how to do the crimp again. Yeah, and, and coming up on Melanie it. Melanie is asking if we're gonna get 0 0.019. Yes, Melanie, we will. Right now I'm using the 0 0.014, which I think is fine for this. Um, However, we do have plans to add the point zero one nine. Um, never you fear. Trish is asking if you're putting shadows in between the purple. I am. I'm doing that because, number one, I need to extend these purple beads a little bit because they might be a little short for me. And I wanted to pull the shadows up into the design of the piece. Um, and I also wanted, I wanted it to act like a little knot really. So can you see what I've got there? Mm -hmm. I think it looks kind of nice. So I'm going to just quickly pull it up around my, I'll show you how I size oh. this in a second, Okay. but okay. 
So I held it up to me. Okay. And I don't know. Do you want to show that, Grace? Sure. Is it worth showing? Oh, we're going to go back to this position. We might. So maybe... Let's do it at the end. Okay, I'll do it just, at the just end. Just show it on yours okay. later. All right. So what I did was I kind of held it up. Let me do it again because I kind of forgot where it was. And I know that this is the very end where I want it to finish. So I'm going to come in. I think I've got time if I do it quickly. Trudy wants the oval copper memory wire in our stock. Do we have it in? We don't carry it. Oh, oval? I thought we carried oval. We have oval, but I don't believe it's in copper. Oh. We just have a couple of colors. A couple of colors. Well, we can put that on the wish list, Trudy. Or Trish. Trudy. Trudy. <laughs> I was right the first time. You were. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to very quickly try and make this match. Two, four, six, eight, ten. You guys are hanging in with me, okay, right? You're all right. It's not too much like watching paint dry. Three, four. This is like Kate's speed, speed stringing. Five, and then five more. The cool thing about it, you know, you guys, once you string one side, the second side just comes together. So let's see what I've got. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm going to put on a crimp tube, and did you notice how I used a crimp tube that was copper? Because I'm covering it with a crimp cover, so it doesn't matter what color I'm using at all. Now, I'll put on my crimp tube on the short end and on the long end. Whoops. They like to jump around, don't they? Those saucy little crimps. Okay. There is one thing, though, I want to point out as I'm crimping this, you guys. Let's make sure that it's tight, but not so tight that there's no movement here. When I come in to use my crimping plier, and Janice and I go over this and over this in Softflex 101 in that Facebook Live episode, so if you haven't watched it, I recommend that you do. There's a lot of great tips. See how, can you see, it's a little hard, but how my saw flex, one strand is going one way, the other is going the other way, and it's not crossed underneath the crimp tube. This, I think, is my number one tip for you if your crimps, if your saw flex pulls out of your crimp tube, okay? If they, when you crimp them, if they're in their own little channel, and I'll turn this so you can see it. If they're in their own little channel when you crimp, they're going to have much more staying power. See that there? I can really get it nice and tightly crimped all the way across. That's the secret to a really, really good crimp. I'm going to hold it up to my eyes here so I can see what I'm doing. I bring it into the foreign one and I turn it and then give it an extra little squeeze. Then when I go ahead to cut away my extra soft flex, I can cut it right there at the crimp tube and nothing's gonna happen. Now, what do we have to pay attention to on this side, you guys? Seam. Seam, that's right, the seam of the crimp cover. So I wanna make sure that the crimp cover seam is in back so it looks really nice. That's the thing too. You don't. You want to really make sure to pay attention to those little details. Are these uh, two by two crimp tubes? They are, you guys. They are two by two crimps. Sorry, I need to get okay. a little closer to my eyes so I can see what's going on. It's a two by two crimp with the corresponding crimp cover. There we go. Get that right in there. Close it right across. Okay, so you can see. That looks nice and finished on the front. Now, what I did here was I started with the melon beads because I had some. Melon bead, shadow. Sometimes the shadows have a little bit of that cotton cord in there, so you have to take it out, a little bit of residue. Um, purple bead. Shadow, melon, because again, once you've done one side, the other side just falls into place. 
questions so far, Grace? No, a lot of people were talking about oval memory wire, um, just about how it sits. It does sit nicely, doesn't it? We should. Janice is probably looking it up she, as we speak. She's looking at the copper right now, Drea said. Oh, she great. She said they're out of stock, so we will get them yeah. when we can. Yeah, I think that's what we've been waiting for. Notice I'm also using the copper soft flex here. Again, the soft flex won't be seen, so it doesn't really matter what color you use. Just use it out of your stash. These um, purple dyed serpentine beads have really big holes. Not really big, but kind of fairly generous. So that's also why I like this shadow bead in here, because the shadow kind of helps it to sit correctly. I just love them. Um, we have a question about why you split in two and not use one strand all the way, I think. I think she's saying oh, instead of going Oh, yeah, on. well, I cut, them, I cut them in half so I knew what I'd have to work with. Um, so that's why I split the strand. But it looks like I need fewer beads than I thought. So I just thought I'd use what was left on the strand. And I know we're not talking about memory wire, but <laughs> there's this whole like side Everyone conversation about it. Everyone wants to talk about but memory Michelle wire. Michelle is saying that she doesn't find that the oval is better. Um, and she's excited to see if she's doing something wrong or if it's just Oh, her. yeah. You know, we have, um, we have memory wire slated again for another Facebook Live, maybe in September or maybe October. We'll tackle it again. Um, there's so much to be said about memory wire, um, and we really like using it. But yeah, I mix. I, I honestly, I haven't used the oval yet. We've had it. Um, we had some requests for it, so that's why we got it in. But I need to play around with it a little bit more. I'm just going to double check to make sure that my length is good. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So I need one more right here. And then I'll hold this up to me and make sure that it's the right length. Drew had posted the right length, by the way, for the M, or the serpentine oh, purple great. mix. Purple mix, great. So I'm going to use these stoppers here. Never, ever, you guys know that the bead's natural habitat is the floor, right? So I come in and I either put tape or these bead stoppers on the end so that I don't drop my necklace and the beads go all over the floor. I'm going to quickly put this around my neck and I'll show you how I do that in a second. But I think I just need one more. How does that look? I know no one can see it, but you will. Looks good. Is that okay? I Is like, that length like all right? It, yeah. Okay. So I'm almost there. So I'm going to, I know that when you're talking about length, you guys, you need to add in the length of your clasp, okay? So that's, I don't know, these toggles are pretty big. They're about an inch. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to add one more. I'm playing with fire because both of my ends of my soft flex are open, and it's bad necklace management to do that. Oh, I've got to wrap this up. <laughs> Jackie says. Will. Hey, is there a way you can bottle up your creative ability and talent in a jar so we can order it? Oh, well, I could try. I get it a lot from my mom. My mom's super creative. She's a pretty creative lady. Janice so. says, I have a dumb question about crimp tubes versus crimp beads. Why use crimp beads? Don't they get smashed with the crimping pliers? Maybe I just don't understand crimp beads. So, you know, Janice, not our Janice. Not our Janice. Um, you know, Janice... I have a lot. I have a lot of thoughts about that. Um, you can find a lot of those thoughts in our Softlex 101 um, Facebook Live broadcast. But in a nutshell, this is the crimp tube right here. Oh, a, let me zoom in on that. A crimp bead is round. It's like a little barrel almost. I find that with the crimp tube, we are crimping. Um, We're crimping with the crimping plier, and it's a lot flatter. Your crimp and your soft flex make more contact with each other. With the crimp bead, it's hard to get it super flat. If you're just crimping flat with your needle nose plier, I think a crimp bead will work fine. 
but I prefer with the crimping plier to use the crimp tube. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, so for the end of this, again, very quickly, it's not, um, we've done this many a time, but I'm going to use my wire guard on the end of this because I like completely covering my soft flex so I don't have anything show. The wire guard's like a little tiny horseshoe. And again, in our soft flex skill builder or in that Facebook Live, you're going to see me do that. Again, I'm playing with fire, so I'm going to put my bead stopper on there. To uh, Jackie's question about bottling up your creativity mm -hmm. and selling it, um, Lynn says that might be very expensive. Well. <laughs> and um, Kim just gave me such a nice shout out, actually. She said oh. she, w she hasn't seen my broadcast yet, and she's really waiting to watch it, and that she loves the piece I made in honor of Janice, which thank you so much, Kim. Oh. And your mom says that she hasn't been able to shake this cold. And Janice says, tubes it is. Thanks, Kate and Grace. Oh, great. Oh, my mom. My mom still has her cold. Mama, you got to get well. Susie says, we need you in Chicago. 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 <laughs> you know, Janice and I are planning on our what we're going to be teaching at Beat and Button next year. So, you know, Beat and Button is right there in Milwaukee. So not far from you. In, as my grand would say, Chicago. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, let me get this. I can't, if it's not close up to my face, I can't really see it. There we go. And crimp. There we go. Nice and tight. Everyone's wishing your mom to get better. Well, yeah. The jet's got that rotten summer cold. Isn't that a bummer? We'll go ahead and we'll put a crimp cover on. I was crimping this and not really talking about my process about it, so let me talk to you a little bit because I've got one more side to crimp. I want to make sure that when I'm crimping this, I'm not crimping it so tightly that I don't have any play in this piece. And I'll show you when I do it on the other side. There we go. Um, that it's really necessary to have some movement or some play. See how now that I've kind of curved, made that in a curve? Can you see how... It, it has some nice movement to it. If I had put on my crimp tube like this, put on my wire guard like this, and come back through, and then put on my toggle clasp. This is called Leafy Toggle. Matches very nicely with the, uh, with the boho bib, the modern woman bib. Slides through. Now, I come down and I'm going to pull everything just so it reaches the crimp tube comes up to that strand but I still have movement okay then I'm going to squeeze the little legs of that wire guard closed give it one more little tug and you can see I've got just like a scant maybe 30 second of an inch bit of play in there but I want that because if I didn't and it was too tight, number one, when I go to put on that crimp cover, that crimp cover isn't going to have anywhere to go. It's not going to have any room for the little side of the crimp cover to close. And when I go to close this necklace to clasp it, the side's going to be so stiff that it's not going to want to close. Okay, so I'll come in, cut away my the rest of this. I need to really make sure that crimp is closed. Yes, closed. Now let's go ahead and get that crimp cover in and I'll show you about needing room. If you don't have room, let me put this in there so you guys can see it. Um, if you don't have room, it's not going to close. See that there? Oh, let me zoom in. And it just closes right around the crimp. And see now when I go to close this. Look at how pretty that closure is. So you can't see any of the crimps. Mm -hmm. Okay, pretty nice. And Mel asked when Beat and Button was, or is, I think she meant Beat Fest. Drea well, told her when Beat and Button was. Yeah, there's June. two things. We can go ahead and move the camera and I'll talk about this cool. at the end and I'll show you. Uh, Bead Fest, which is coming up next weekend where Janice and I are going to have our meet and greet. Mm -hmm. It's up on the blog. 
so you can see um, we're going to be um, at Beadfest. I'm there starting Thursday, and then Janice is coming in on Friday, and our meet and greet is Saturday in my classroom. I think it's classroom number 16 um, at Beadfest in the classroom area. Bead and Button is held every June, and so it's the first week of June, um, and it's in Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let me put this sucker on. Linda says she's found toggles are better for customers with arthritis. Yeah, I um, I like a toggle a lot. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. How does that yeah. look? Ditto. Is it the right length? Just the tassel looks better. It's my tassel wonky. Is it fixed? Yeah. Style zoom me, Gracie. In. Style I'm me. I'm going to zoom in right off the next Hold on. Okay, I'm zooming in on your, your necklace. On my necklace. It's not too bad, right? Is it the right length? I did that without a mirror. Who knew? <laughs> no idea. But you guys know. You know Looks how. Um, you know your necklace lengths, right? Just hold it up. I just held it up. So what I did was, when I was holding it, I'll do it with this one. I held this. I kind of felt where I wanted this to be. And I pulled this around back. And then I kind of measured with my finger. And I went, well, I need about that much for the clasp. So I'm about there. So it's like, you know, I always liken to making a necklace like this, like making a couture ball gown. You just don't go to your dressmaker and go, here's the pattern, here's the fabric, I'll be back for a dress that fits me perfectly. You have to try it on several times. It's the same thing with a necklace like this. You just have to secure the ends closed so your beads aren't going to fall off and try it on and see what fits. It was perfect really fun. Length, perfect length. Wow. Looks great on you. Thanks. Love, love, love. Thanks. Right here style. <laughs> I love it. So you could do, you guys, that same thing with the smaller one like this if you wanted something a little bit smaller. Um, you could also use, I'm not going to show you how to do it, but you could, because you guys already know how, you could just use, um, this is our 1.5 millimeter leather. You could just bring that leather through and do a little silk wrap or a little crimp or something like that. This is just regular Ceylon that you could silk wrap with. So there are lots of ways. You don't have to string it. You could put it on leather. You could put it on chain. But I'm kind of stoked about this necklace. I really oh, wanted to make something. Are stoked about this um, necklace. I really wanted to make something. You know, I'm tired of. I'm wearing this one all the time. I need a fresh one to wear on camera. So it was really fun. So what we'll do is Gracie will take a few shots of this. I'll make a materials list and I'll toss it over to the blog so you guys can see this. Um, but essentially, you just need to go over right to beadshop.com, check out our boho components. They're under our components page. You can check out the melon beads. You can check out the bugles um, and just jump in and have some fun with it. Please send in your photos. I want to see what you make because I know um, a lot of you have these guys rattling around already from our giveaway. Yep, yeah, question. Does it feel heavy? No. Uh-uh. No, I, we just had a question on it. Yeah, and no. And Anna says it looks like an Egyptian goddess. Thank you. I d it did feel a little Egyptian. Do I want to put it? Should I put it on <laughs> my head? Style. Karen style. <laughs> or Karen, whenever we get anything, Karen likes to put it on her head. So that's my little homage to Karen. Um, it's not heavy at all. And the thing about this is that since it's worn kind of close to the chest, that it's um, the weight isn't pulling you forward. But it's not, it's not heavy at all. Really? Question on what we're doing yep. for Wednesday. What are we doing? What's we're doing break what? stitch. You're, Thank you. You're I'm like, us. <laughs> what day is this? Where am I? Yes, so I'm going to be uh, winging my way to Bead Fest on Wednesday, but you will have Grace and Emily, and they're doing some fantastic brick stitch bracelets. And uh, we'll send out that newsletter. We'll go out on Monday with a preview um, of those guys. So it's back to Seed Bead Schools in session, right, mm -hmm. uh, on, on Wednesday. So it'll be great. Emily has some really, really fun um, uh, projects for you there. And Grace will be her sidekick. And Gracie, you're going to do Brick Stitch. I know. I'm excited. It's going to be really amazing. Excited. It's going to be really fun. And then next week, there isn't going to be a special free tip Friday per se. I'm going to be kind of running around Bead Fest with Janice and Drea, and so we'll be popping in throughout next weekend. Um, who knows what we're going to share with you, but it's going to be a lot of fun. But stay tuned to the newsletter um, and the Facebook page, and we'll tell you a little more about that as those things evolve. 
So if you haven't opened up your newsletter, please do. We've got a great coupon code in there for you. What's the coupon code, Gracie? Sky20. Sky20. That's right. So it's 20% off store-wide, and um, that goes through the weekend, uh, through uh, Monday. Monday, I think, right? Yep, through Monday. So, um, But make sure to open up your newsletter every day because we've got, we're revealing more and more of our tiaras, which look great. Or you can see them all right now. Hop over to the blog. But we really, really want you to participate in the tiara challenge, so we can't wait to see what you do there. All right, well, this free tip Friday went long, 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 but I think it was worth it. Who cares? <laughs> Throwing caution to the wind. All right, you guys, have a fantastic weekend. Gracie has videos. one final. Videos from Beef Fest. What happened? Videos from Beef Fest. Yeah, videos. Okay. We're going to be jumping in. Don't you worry. We'll be coming at you live from Beef Fest. You can't keep us off this, this Facebook Live. You bet. But as I said, stay tuned to our Facebook page and to our blog, and we'll give you more info about that. Alrighty, you guys, have a fantastic weekend. Stay creative, have a good time, and Emily and Grace will see you next Wednesday for Facebook Live. See you soon. Bye-bye.